Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman history. Ruling from 717 to 741, Leo the Isaurian was born in Germaniakia in northern Syria and was largely unopposed in his ascension to the throne. He had a powerful ally in Artabastos and Leo was a career soldier, which, in the face of the Arabs' full-scale invasion, was his most endearing quality to those that held power. Patriarch Germanus made him swear to uphold orthodoxy in accordance with its restoration under Anastasius II. The monothelite spectre that Philippicus had dredged up had only been defeated four years earlier. Mosalema had sacked Sardis and Pergamon in Asia Minor in 716, as Leo had left Armorian to take the throne from Theodosius III. The Arab fleet, having spent months plundering the western Aegean, wintered in Cilicia. In the spring of 717, the Arab forces surrounded Constantinople and pillaged all Thrace. Their work was cut out for them, however, as the strengthening of the city and stockpile of supplies by Anastasius II had properly prepared the capital for this eventuality. It is also no exaggeration to say that had the Arabs succeeded, then all of Eastern and Central Europe would have been open for conquest. The Arab success in reaching as far as Tours in the same period gives evidence that they would not have hesitated to expand in this direction, which was far closer to their centre in Damascus. A massive army, said to be 200,000 strong, with roughly 5,000 ships, was sent against Constantinople. Its aim encapsulated by Caliph Suleiman, who was reported to have said, I shall not cease from the struggle with Constantinople until either I conquer it or I destroy the entire dominion of the Arabs in trying. Leo III used fire ships to harass the Arab navy. He allied with Khan Tervel of Bulgaria to help the Romans strike at the Arabs on land. The Arabs surrounded Constantinople with a palisade and created siege engines. The winter of 717 was incredibly harsh. It snowed for so long that it remained snow-covered for a hundred days. The Islamic army, ill-prepared for snow, died in droves from frostbite, disease, perishing food supplies, as well as losing many beasts of burden vital for the siege. An Egyptian and African navy sailed to resupply the Arabs, but the Egyptian and African sailors, many likely being Christians, deserted to Leo and with the fire ships burned all of the supply ships and took what they could back to Constantinople. Leo performed a ceremony on the water, similar to that of Moses. Icons were paraded around the walls. Leo made the cross his symbol of Christian victory. These were all vital in rallying the morale of the defenders. Meanwhile, the Strategos of Sicily proclaimed Basil Onomaglulos, renamed Tiberius Emperor, thinking the capital was doomed. Leo was able to quickly put down this revolt, however, Sardinia, Corsica and the Balearic Islands appear to have slipped from the Empire's authority at this time. By the late spring of 718, the Arabs assaulted the city but were beaten back. Caliph Umar II recalled the army which withdrew on the 15th of August of that year. Leo sent his fleet to harass the Arabs and succeeded in destroying the majority of their fleet. To many, the end of the world had been averted. However, though the prospect of taking Constantinople was thoroughly gone, the Arabs were still very strong and continued to raid the Roman frontiers annually from 719 to 741. The Fomatic armies seemed to have been insufficient to properly counter these raids. Judith Heron comments on this by saying, in Judith Heron, The Formation of Christendom, page 322, Not only had the triumph for Constantinople in 718 failed to drive the Arabs away, but in addition, the spiritual protection accorded to the capital was denied to Asia Minor in the 720s. There was no longer any guarantee of safety. With the imminent threat of the Empire's destruction over, Leo went on the offensive and sent a fleet that sacked Laodicea in Syria and troops that drove the Arabs out of the frontier regions, retaking Western Armenia in the process. 
Leo III could finally see to the governance of the empire. Due to the 20 years of near anarchy, the obvious inadequacy of the thematic military, administrative dislocation, as well as political instability, these issues had to be resolved. However, in 719, Anastasius II, now with the crisis over, and with the support of top officials in Constantinople, left his monastic exile in Thessalonica and gained the support of the Bulgars to reclaim his throne. The Emperor caught wind of this plot after the letters sent from Anastasius' supporters fell into Leo's hands. He beheaded its ringleaders and cut off their noses and exiled the rest as well as confiscated their possessions. Anastasius marched on Constantinople with the Bulgars, but once Leo had written to the Bulgars, they apologised for their transgression and handed Anastasius II and his supporters over to Leo, who were executed. The Bulgars then returned to their lands and resumed their peace with the Romans. Artabastos, Strategos of Armeniacon, was placed in charge of Opsikion Strategia and was made Kurapalites. Thus Leo had his closest ally near Constantinople. Meanwhile, the Arabs raided into Anatolia against Pisidian Antioch. In 720, Leo also crowned his baby son Constantine as co-emperor. Leo introduced the silver Miliaresion coin, replacing the long since disused silver hexagram coin introduced by Heraclius. The Arabs raided against Western Armenia and took 700 slaves. It was during the first nine years of Leo's reign that Leo started to reorganise the thematic armies. Leo also probably made measures concerning the defences of the empire. In 721, Dalesandos was lost to the Arabs. The following year, Leo may have begun forced baptism of the Jews and monetists. They reluctantly accepted but essentially ignored their new faith. This whole affair is only recorded in Theophanes, who, when dealing with the iconoclast emperors, is particularly unreliable. In addition, the Romans managed to defeat the Arabs, passing through Isauria, and the Khazars renewed their conflict with the Arabs, taking some pressure off of the frontiers. In 723, Camarakon, Iconian, and Muasa were sacked, the adult male population of Muasa was killed and the women and children enslaved. In 725, there was an Arab raid against Cyprus and other small islands. In 726, Caesarea was sacked by Masalama. It was this year that Leo completed his revision of the Justinianic Code called the Ecliga. Written in Greek, it updated many laws and was much smaller which made it far more practical for use at a local level. Several laws were revised to make them more humane and more pleasing to God, such as reducing the number of offences punishable by death, replacing them with mutilation. In addition, it outlawed abortion, made homosexuality punishable by death, and limited divorce. Here you can see biblical law starting to be implemented into Roman law. The eruption of Mount Thera in that year was the final straw for Leo III, who instituted his iconoclasm. The modern scholars have some consensus that Leo probably just did not like icons, as it seemingly broke the second commandment not to make or worship any graven image of God. Icons were also being blamed for God's anger at the Romans, and explained their frequent defeats to the imageless Muslims as well as other qualms, such as poor church attendance, Caliph Yazid II's banning of images, and the significant adoration of icons, also played into this. Leo replaced his icons with the cross, which was not subject to the same kind of pomp and circumstance that icons had enjoyed, though was still iconic. Though Leo destroyed icons, and banned people using them for prayer, he did not persecute iconophiles, nor challenge them theologically as Constantine V did. In response to the Pope's strong opposition to the Emperor's iconoclasm, the Italian troops mutinied, killing the Exarch. 
In 727, the Strategoi of Hellas and the Carabicianoi rebelled, proclaiming Cosmos Emperor. They sailed to Constantinople, but were defeated by Leo's navy that used Greek fire. With the revolt over, he created the Strategia of Crete and the naval Strategia of Kibereot, replacing the Carabicianoi by moving its headquarters from the Aegean Islands to Kibera. Messalama plundered his way to Paphlagonia and sacked Gangra. He sieged Nicaea, but was driven off by Artabastos, Count of the Opsikion Strategia. In 728, there was another Arab raid into Western Armenia, and Samalos was captured. There were raids in 729 to 730, which resulted in Faradia and Carizianon being lost. It is roughly at this time that Leo had a census of Italy performed. Pope Gregory II managed to prevent the census being performed in lands under his influence and embittered the papacy against the emperor. This census should be seen as Constantinople's attempt to impose greater control over its western possessions after decades of neglect. Judith Heron speculates that this was actually just part of a full census of the empire, re-establishing the authority of the imperial administration after decades of near anarchy. In 730, Patriarch Germanos resigned his post in protest to Leo's iconoclasm, which he had now officially adopted in the court, and the new Patriarch Anastasius had to accept iconoclasm. In 733, Leo married his son Constantine to Tazitzak, daughter of the Khazar Kargan, forming an alliance with the Kharganate against the Umayyad Caliphate. She was baptised and given the name Irene. Leo sent the Kibereot fleet to Italy to punish the Pope, but it was shipwrecked in the Adriatic Sea. Leo revoked the Pope's ecclesiastical authority over southern Italy, Sicily, Greece and the Aegean Islands and gave it to the Patriarch of Constantinople. In 738, Ravenna was lost to the Lombards, but was recaptured by the Exarch the Duke of Venetia and the Pope. However, the Lombard king annexed the Lombards of southern Italy, surrounding Byzantine central and northern Italy. In 741, the Arabs raided into the Phrexicion Strategia. This finally prompted Leo to act. In the Battle of Acrinum, the Roman army, led by Leo and Constantine, defeated an Arab army of some 20,000 men. The Arabs suffered a majority of casualties and were utterly defeated. Also in that year, a terrible earthquake struck Constantinople, Thrace and Bithynia, killing many and destroying many buildings. Leo raised an additional tax to rebuild the collapsed sections of the Theodosian walls. In 741, the Arabs quickly returned and raided again. In June, Leo died of dropsy at the age of 55. Leo III is remembered for chiefly three things. The Siege of Constantinople in 717 to 718, the Eclaga, and the beginning of Iconoclasm. He won some victories, reimposed the administrative authority of the Empire on the provinces, survived three major insurrections, and managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Pope coming out far better than Constance II or Justinian II had done. His long reign brought back stability to the empire and the successful succession of his son proved that dynastic stability was restored. The issues over icons were disruptive but tolerable. The raids into Anatolia and Lombard attacks were managed. However, although Leo III the Isaurian's reign was never especially spectacular compared with his son or his more illustrious predecessors, his reign saw the beginnings of the long revival of the Eastern Roman Empire in the 8th and 9th centuries, and by his death, the era of the Eastern Roman Empire's struggle for survival had come to an end. I have been your host Daniel Maynard, please be certain to like, subscribe and share this video and this has been Eastern Roman History.